swear that the information above has been correctly recorded. And is true in all respects. And is true in all respects. And I fully understand the conditions under which I am enlisting. I fully understand the conditions under which I'm enlisting. Congratulations, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, sir. 24 years. You've spent over half your life in the Navy. Yes, sir. The Navy is my life. That's probably why I never got married. You might say I'm married to the Navy. And you have no regrets? No, sir. In 24 years in the Navy, I've only been involved in two wars. With a wife, I might not have been so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Chief. Thank you, sir. You know, it's interesting the things that'll turn a man to a Navy career. With me, it happened when I was in high school, and I got fascinated with the history of the Navy. How about you? With me, sir, I dug the Navy the first time I put on that sailor suit. Midi blouse, bell-bottom trousers. Oh, you mean the uniform you got when you first enlisted? Oh, no, the one my mother made for me when I was five. <laughs> and you knew even then that you were destined to go Navy? Yes, sir. Although the Navy today is not like the Navy when I first went in. Well, it's changed a little. A little? When I first went in, we slept on racks made out of canvas and pipe. Today they have mattresses, berths, with built-in lockers and reading lights. It's like a regular Caribbean cruise. <laughs> The only thing missing is shuffleboard, rumba lessons, and Tony Mark. I, uh, I think you're exaggerating, Chief. Oh, no, sir. On the aircraft carrier America, they spent over $53,000 on bunk curtains alone. Bunk curtains. What's wrong with that? Well, why stop there, sir? Why not get each sailor a Princess Pat phone and a Snoopy doll? <laughs> I see nothing wrong in making living quarters more comfortable. Well, you can bet me, sir, in the near future, every sailor on a ship is going to have his own private head. Now, jeez. <laughs> Think of it, sir. 5,000 toilets flushing all at the same time. <laughs> It'll sound like a submarine attack. Chief, remember what the Blue Jackets manual says. The roots of the Navy lie in a strong belief in the future. Now, there'll be time enough to look back when you retire. Yes, sir. <laughs> Congratulations again, and good luck. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Company 144, Robinson. No, Chief Shark, he's still up at the CO's office. Right, I'll tell him. Hey, man. Robinson, don't sit on my desk. You just had a call. Your new men, they're still up at Sigbay getting their shots. Robinson, did you hear what I said? Don't sit on my desk. You want to sit on a desk? Go up to your own company and sit on your desk. Okay, okay. Well, I sometimes eat on this desk. <laughs> so? So? Did you used to do that at home? Sit on your kitchen table where you eat? Oh, man. In my home, we used to sit on it, sleep on it. Mom gave birth to three kids on it. <laughs> Terrific. And what'd you do to keep it clean? Hose it down? <laughs> don't sit on the desk. You're a cold man, Sharky. Cold. Why? Because I don't want you to sit on the desk? No, because I came down here to congratulate you on shipping over in your 24th year, and all I get is hostility. I even brought you something to celebrate the event. You brought me something? What? There you go. <laughs> a hockey puck with a candle in it. <laughs> you shouldn't have done it, you crazy guy, yeah. <laughs> well, I knew you were a guy that didn't like a big deal, so I kept it simple. Yeah, simple. Simple, that's, that's what the CO and I were just talking about. And everything was nice and simple. The good old days, huh? Your favorite subject. Right. The good old days of segregation. I didn't say that. Well, that's what you had back then, segregation. That's what you want to go back to? Separate all the blacks into one unit? Of course not. But let's face it, man. You people do make the best drum and bugle call. <laughs> You know what I mean. The good old days. Before they had the fancy curtains and the reading light. Yeah, but they're not listening to you. Listen, did you read this? Let's see. Where is that? Where is that? Uh, oh, oh, here it is. <laughs> Navy to allow women to serve on some ships. Another long-standing tradition is about to fall with the I Navy. I know, I know. It's never going to happen. Yeah, but I just read you this, this article here. I don't care what you read. As far as I'm concerned, it's never going to happen. And the day I have to serve with a woman, that's the day I'm going to turn in my papers. Why? 
because broads are trouble, that's why. <laughs> Did you ever look at dried makeup on a sink? <laughs> Eyelashes with nobody in them? <laughs> Women on board ship. Boy, Sharky, you don't know what's happening, do you? You wanna know what's happening? Watch. Ho, great, bar. Ho, great, bar. Ho, great. That's a parade passing you by, man. Ho, great, bar. That's the parade passing you by, man. <laughs> Zippity doo da, zippity doo da. Hey, Shark. Yeah? Congratulations. Oh, thanks. And thanks for the cake. Excuse me, Chief. Yeah, what is it, Pruitt? Well, first platoon's ready for you, sir. The rest of the company's still up getting their uniform issue. Okay. Then we'll take the first platoon. <laughs> At ease. Now, let me reintroduce myself in case you've forgotten who I am. My name is Chief Petty Officer Sharkey, and I'm your company commander. Right now, I'm the most important person in your life, and your friend. And during the next nine weeks, you're going to be living with this friendly face. <laughs> I'm going to take you through recruit training. We'll take you through recruit training, and we're going to make Company 144 the best. Now, it's true in the Navy, uh, it used to be very, very strict about general appearances. Now they've eased up on it. And so, when you come out of boot camp, you'll be able to let your hair grow. <laughs> that ought to make you very happy. You'll be able to wear your afro again. I wouldn't know, sir. I ain't never had no afro. Ah, I guess you have to be a certain type to wear an afro. You have to have certain features. You have to be a, um, a, uh... You sure you never wore an afro? <laughs> no, sir. Huh, well, <laughs> to each his own. <laughs> yeah, well, to eat that. What was that? Oh, uh, that's the way we do it on the street. I slap you five and that says you're my man. My main man. We're not forming a band. <laughs> and you're not on the street. We're in the Navy. In the Navy, we don't slap. We salute, you understand? Yes, sir. I don't slap my man, I salute my man. And I'm not your man, I'm your CPO. <laughs> yes, sir, my CPO. My main CPO. <laughs> I'm gonna keep an eye on you. <laughs> now, while we are here, you will shave every day from the bottom of your Adam's apple to the top of your tragus. You, where's your tragus? Well, I don't know, sir. Am I supposed to have one? <laughs> of course you're supposed to have one. Every man here has a tragus. In fact, every man here has two traguses. Oh, those are... Wrong! <laughs> I'm gonna keep an eye on you. The tragus is over here, by the hole in your ear. Now, each one of you has been issued one of these. This is your ditty bag. <laughs> you. Me, sir? No, the bunk. I'm talking to the bunk. <laughs> yeah, you. What do you keep in your ditty bag? My ditties? <laughs> ditties? What about dighties? How about pampers? I'm gonna keep an eye on you. In your ditty bag, you'll keep your toilet articles, underwear, and clean socks. Clean socks. And don't let anybody think they can get away with it and keep unclean socks in there. Because if you keep unclean socks in there, believe me, it'll get around. 
Now, we're going to hit that grinder and make Company 144 the best. Company 144 is the best! <laughs> Who told you to say that? Who asked you? I'm oh, sorry, sir. I thought you wanted us to say it again. If I wanted you to say it again, I would have told you to say it again. I'm going to keep an eye on you. <laughs> okay, Pruitt. Move them out. But first, what company is the best? Company 144 is the best! Good. You want us to say it again, sir? Go away. <laughs> Pruitt. Chief Sharkey? Oh, good morning again, sir. Anything I can do for you? Oh, I thought it might be a good idea to bring my replacement around to the various companies so you could meet your new commanding officer. Oh, you're leaving us, sir? Oh, yes, my tour of duty at RTC is over. Oh, well, I guess every tour of duty has to end somewhere. Congratulations. Oh, no, no, not him. Captain? <laughs> this is your new commanding officer. Captain Quinlan? I'd like you to meet Chief Sharkey. How do you do, Chief? I'm sure we're going to enjoy working together. Oh, I'm sure you are. Chief Sharkey is one of our best. Good. Well, that's all for now. Carry on, Chief. Captain. Shark. Mm. You heard from our new CEO yet? <laughs> man, I have to laugh every time I think of the look on your face yesterday when she walked out of here. You look like a man on welfare who's just been told his wife had triplets. <laughs> All girls. All ugly. <laughs> yeah, that must have been pretty funny. Especially after I said the day I serve with a woman, that's the day I turn in my papers. Right. Right. So that's what I'm doing. Hmm? Here, read this. Desiring to discontinue my naval service, I respectfully request that I be transferred to the Fleet Reserve as soon as possible. You know what you look like, Robinson? A man on welfare. He's just been told he has three ex-wives to support. All ugly. <laughs> You gotta be kidding about this. I mean, you gonna throw away 24 years, give up a career just because your new CO is a woman? You got it. I mean, what is the matter with you? There are women in the service all over the world. Well, I just read the other day that in China, they got a woman who's captain of a ship. In China, they can get away with it. They all wear pajamas and they all look alike. <laughs> you really gonna send this in to the CO, huh? No, I'm gonna send it to Dear Abby and sign it puzzled in San Diego. <laughs> I'm gonna send it in. Excuse me, Chief. What is it, Pruitt? Just reporting a problem with one of the men. Recruit J.P. Fletcher. What's the matter? <laughs> Threw up on the parade ground. <laughs> Threw up? Yes, sir. And he's been crying. What's he crying about? Gets to eat again at 5.30. Personally, I don't think it's just an upset stomach. I think it's one of them homesick cases. Where is he? Sitting on his bunk. Maybe I better go have a talk with him. Carry on. Aye, aye, sir. See? That's what you can expect when you got a woman commanding officer. What are you talking about? What's she got to do with it? I'll tell you what she's got to do with it. This kid sees her wandering around the base giving orders. He sees her as a mother figure. He thinks of his own mother and throws up. <laughs> Mark my words. With a woman in charge, there's going to be a lot of throwing up. <laughs> Fletcher, what's with you? Sit down, I'm talking. Yes, sir. 
What's the matter? What happened? Something wrong with the breakfast? What'd you have? Scrambled eggs, pork sausage, and hash brown potatoes. No wonder you're sick. None of us eat that. <laughs> All right. All right. What is it? Are we working you too hard? Well, no, sir. It isn't that. It's... Then what? Well, it's... It's not the way I thought it was going to be. How old are you, kid? Seventeen, sir. Seventeen. That's how old I was when I first got in. Oh, boy, those first days were really tough. Really tough. For you too, sir? I wanted to get out in the worst way. I wanted to go home and see my family, my dog. You got a dog? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I might have been able to get out, but I thought I'd stick it out one more day. Then another day, a day after that. Pretty soon I forgot why I wanted to get out. That was 24 years ago. 24 years? That's right. Look, kid, if you hang in there, believe me, it'll be a lot easier. Do you want to know how hard it was for me the first days? You promise you won't tell anybody? Oh, I promise, sir. <laughs> the first week, I sobbed myself to sleep every night. The second week, I only cried. <laughs> then a month of sniffles, and I was fine. Wow. Do you feel better now? Oh, yes, sir. Good. Uh, sir? Yeah? Should I go back to my company now? Been excused. You don't have to. I think I'd like to. Then go to it. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, babe. Hello, Robinson. So long, Robinson. I hate long goodbyes. <laughs> Where are you going? Did you hear anything? CO's office called me. She wants to see me. She must have got my papers. Well, she's probably going to ask you to reconsider. I've said no to women before. <laughs> you, uh, you learn how to do that when you've got a body like mine. <laughs> she might talk you into staying. Are you kidding? A woman talk me into anything? Look at this face. Do you know why I'm not married? Because of that face? No, dummy. Because this look turns them off. This is the face she's going to see. Chief Petty Officer Sharkey reporting his audit. At ease. Chief, I wanted to see you personally because of a communication that was delivered to me this morning. Yes, ma'am. Now, I know we may only be talking about one individual. But as our Blue Jackets manual tells us, in the modern Navy, the emphasis is on the individual. And part of my program is to see that we don't lose a single individual at this center. <laughs> yes, ma'am, if it can be done. Sometimes a man's mind can't be changed. Well, let's see if a man's mind can't be changed. You can imagine my reaction my first week here getting a communication like this. We are writing to tell you about a phone call we received from our son who was newly enlisted in the Navy. He told us that he was afraid he had made a mistake and wanted out. And then he had a talk with his company commander, a gentleman named Sharkey. <laughs> he said this man was so understanding and sympathetic that he suddenly didn't feel so alone and confused. We wanted you to know how much we appreciate the special attention given to our son so that he can give his new life the chance it deserves. Sincerely, Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Fletcher. <laughs> That's why I wanted to see you, Chief. I was told you were one of the best men here at the center, and I can see why. That's it? <laughs> That's it. Except to tell you that you'll be receiving my personal letter of commendation to be made part of your permanent record. I'm proud to have a man like you in my command. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah. Anything else, Chief? No, sir. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> Good 
Bradshaw, that request for separation by Chief Sharkey, have it ready for him. I think he's reconsidered. Aye, aye, man. Bradshaw, I sent a letter to Captain Quinlan. Has she seen it? You know, I've given it a lot of thought. <laughs> Those kids need me. <laughs> they sure do. How do you like the new CO? I'm gonna keep an eye on her. <laughs> Commanding Officer RTC to Chief Petty Officer Sharkey. It is with a feeling of deep admiration that I submit this letter of commendation into your permanent record. Yo. You have shown... <laughs> hey, what's going on? I never did hear what happened at the meeting with the CO. Did she ask you to stay or what? Naturally, she wanted me to stay. And what did you say? I said, I'd think about it. Hey, that's great! <laughs> what's that? What's what? That. What? Oh, this! Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a request for getting out. She sent it back. She's hoping I'll reconsider and tear it up. Oh, hey, man, I really would hate to lose you. So let me do it for you. Comedy Central is McHale's next...